Have you ever played a game called Postal that was released back in 1997? It was an isometric shooter where you ran around killing people for pretty much no reason. The goal in each level was to kill a certain percentage of people, then move on to the next level where you'd do the same thing. People who weren't killed off completely would lay on the floor and scream in agony, and you'd be able to run up to them and execute them. Postal became an extremely controversial game, and ended up being banned in several countries. Hatred plays the same exact way, and feels like a modern remake of Postal, with a monochromatic black and white color palette. Even some of the levels are clearly inspired from Postal, such as the train station, suburban neighborhood, and a US military base. There are a lot of other little references to Postal, such as the sound of phones ringing when you're shooting up certain places. In Hatred, you play as the antagonist, a guy who is fed up with people and decides to go on a killing spree. The goal of each level is to kill a certain amount of civilians. At the same time, the more civilians you kill, the more resistance you'll encounter. First, it'll just be regular cops with pistols, then you'll be fighting cops with shotguns, SWAT teams with SMGs, and eventually the US military that have assault rifles and rocket launchers. Think of Grand Theft Auto's wanted system, except in this game, you can't get rid of your wanted level. As far as weapon selection goes, you use the same weapons your enemies drop, so all the guns I just mentioned are pretty much the only ones available to you. Yeah, that leaves a lot to be desired. The only other weapon I've come across was the flamethrower, but I've only seen it twice. Along with guns, there are three types of grenades, frag, molotov, and the flashbang. The only way to regain your health is by performing executions on downed enemies. If there's little to no enemies around, the game zooms in for a cinematic style execution. If there are enemies around, then your character just shoots them. Be careful as you are vulnerable when you perform the latter. Hatred is a difficult game for a wide variety of reasons, to the point where it is almost unfair. Enemies have near-perfect accuracy, while your character almost always misses at point-blank range. Seriously, there were so many times when an enemy is right in front of me, I unload an entire clip of my assault rifle, and I miss every shot. When it comes to close quarters, your best bet is to press F to kick them away, or crouch by holding down control, and then shoot. In general, aiming from the hip results in poor accuracy, so you're left with two choices. You can either hold down the right mouse button to sort of manually aim, which results in a very awkward camera angle, or stay crouched. Staying crouched will give you excellent accuracy, but you'll have no mobility. You'll be a sitting duck. The developers seem to have a poor understanding of game balance. About halfway through the game, you'll start encountering the army. Once you've almost finished your objective of slaughtering a certain amount of civilians, you're pretty much being hunted down by what seems to be an infinite amount of SWAT officers and soldiers. They come from all directions surrounding you, filling you full of bullets. If you die and respawn at the beginning of the level, soldiers and other enemies will start magically spawning right fucking behind you. Your best bet is to kill as many of them as you can and then just try to run away. If you're low on health, try to find some civilians to execute. But the execution system itself is wonky. It's hard to tell who is still alive and who is dead if you're staring at a screen full of corpses. If you hold down the left alt key, it'll highlight people who are still alive in red, but having that button bound to alt is extremely counterintuitive. I mean, you're using one hand on the mouse and the other hand on WASD and R to reload and shift to run and space to roll. And of course the number keys to switch weapons. So having to press ALT in the middle of all of that? Ugh. It's also hard to put just enough bullets into someone in order to down them instead of outright killing them. This is the most difficult when it comes to dealing with SWAT and the army, as you'll put about 10 rounds in them, and they'll only stagger back having their armor absorb the brunt of the damage. To make matters worse, the controls are unresponsive. About halfway through the game, I realized that I can enable raw mouse input in the options menu. Unfortunately, this removes the reloading progress circle around your cursor. While it helped a little bit, the game was still sluggish and clunky. There were times I pressed spacebar and my character wouldn't roll. There were times I pressed R to reload and he didn't. There were times I pressed 2 to switch to my second weapon and I'd still be on my first. It didn't make any sense. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I tried switching to my Xbox 360 controller, but holy shit, hatred is unplayable with a gamepad. There are other issues that make the game harder than it needs to be. The shotgun? I can't fucking stand it. There is no way to cancel reloading it. If you're out of shells and you left click to fire, your character loads one shell and then fires it. If you press the reload key on the other hand, he doesn't stop reloading until all six shells are in. It's absolutely infuriating. And as much as I love the aesthetics and the graphics, at times everything is just too fucking dark. In the game's suburban levels, cops blend into the bushes, the grass, and the trees, making them hard to spot. Your character wears a black trench coat, so sometimes even I have trouble locating him on the screen. 
Other times you end up running into little things that halt your movement, and I have to squint to see what exactly am I stuck on. Overall, Hatred does a terrible job of providing the player with audio and visual feedback. There's some other really stupid things in this game. Uh, for example, if a car simply taps you, you die immediately. Yeah, even if you're at full HP. Ugh. The only real way to combat the difficulty is by getting respawn tokens. Each level has several places you can go to perform optional objectives. These are marked by icons on your minimap. Going to the area starts a side objective, and these range from shooting up a funeral procession, blowing up coffee shops, taking down American flags in the army base, and so on and so forth. Successfully completing them pretty much gives you extra lives. Hatred was released on June 1st. When it came out, it was a buggy disaster and ran like dog shit. Since then, it's been patched around 12 times, and guess what? It still runs like absolute dog shit. With a lot of settings disabled, I was getting anywhere from 20 to 45 FPS, and a good chunk of these settings had no effect on improving performance. The game favors Nvidia cards, so if you have an AMD one like me, you're fucked. Don't get me wrong, the game looks great, and the physics engine is absolutely amazing. You can literally destroy just about everything on the map. I love the color palette, and I just love how the neon lights, blood, and explosions are accentuated. But if I can run Witcher 3 on Ultra at 2560x1440 with a frame rate above 45 on a single 280x, then there's clearly something wrong with your game. As far as bugs are concerned, the game is still crash prone. It crashed on me twice, once when I went into the control screen and once when I tried to restart a level. Speaking of bugs, one of the levels, the NPCs bugged out. They literally stood there as I shot them all. Pretty much none of them ran away or reacted to anything. The AI in general is dreadful, even when it doesn't bug out. Civilians sometimes run toward you instead of running away. SWAT and the army kill civilians by accident when they're trying to shoot you instead. Last month there was a free content update, introducing survival mode. I was expecting some lazy afterthought, but it's actually decent. You have three new maps and three characters to choose from. You fight waves and waves of cops, SWAT, and soldiers. Whenever you get kills, you get experience points and money. In between waves, you can spend money to purchase environmental hazards. Once you're finally gunned down, you're given a score. Ranking up unlocks new guns and perks. There's online leaderboards for comparing your high score to other players, but sadly there's no multiplayer. While this review may seem overly critical, I did enjoy Hatred. It's a decent game. Something's up in three categories. The positive aspects of this game, or what make it stand out, definitely the aesthetic and the destruction system. Seeing the black and white world become colorized with blood and explosions after throwing a grenade in a building is a feast for the eyes. The parts that don't stand out but are still decent is the combat and the executions. Combat is pretty standard when it comes to twin-stick shooters. It's nothing special, but it is competent. And the executions are just too tame for my liking. I was hoping for a lot more gore and some dismemberment. Sadly, the most extreme execution is nothing more than a curb stomp. Everything else is either a stab to the head or a shot to the chest. It would have been awesome separating someone's torso from their legs with a shotgun. And lastly, the cons. Definitely the bugs, the performance, the unresponsive controls, and the length. Hatred, sadly, is only three hours long. Now, the original Postal was also three hours long, but that game is almost 20 years old. $20 seems a bit too much in this day and age for only three hours of content in a video game. But I did enjoy it, and I do think it's worth picking up if it's on sale. If these cons were non-existent, then this game would have been amazing. As it stands, it's just decent and enjoyable. This review is pretty much over, but I can't end the video without talking about the political nonsense that almost prevented this game from being released on Steam. If you're not interested in what I have to say, then feel free to close the video. When the trailer for Hatred was first released, an uproar was caused by the spineless, shitty, social justice warrior, quote-unquote journalistic gaming websites like Polygon, Kotaku, Rock Paper Shotgun, and many others, all of which I think you should avoid. Hatred received such huge, undeserved backlash that it was even removed from Steam Greenlight by some unknown brainless twat. Thankfully, Gabe Newell being the sane man that he is, put it back on Greenlight and sent an email to the developers apologizing for what happened. But it didn't stop there, did it? Polygon posted around 10 articles about Hatred, condemning how brutal the game is, based off of 1 minute and 30 seconds of trailer footage. They went so far as to post an article claiming the CEO is an Islamophobic neo-Nazi. Their source? Some shitty fucking Tumblr blog that claimed that this is a genocide simulator where you play as a white supremacist slaughtering people of color. Then again, this is Polygon, a website which gives 
low scores to games because some female characters' tits were too big. Then they spend half the review whining about how degrading that is to women. Once the game finally came out, John Walker, who's an editor for Rock Paper Shotgun, wrote a hilariously bad review of it. Near the end, he writes that the game failed to be controversial. So, dumbass social justice warriors like John Walker gave the game negative press long before it was released. They claimed it was a controversial game and we should all be appalled by it. They inadvertently hyped it up to a great fucking extent. And then, I'm, I'm just honestly at a loss for words here. This kind of stupidity really leaves me speechless. These moronic social justice warriors made this game popular by talking non-stop about how controversial it is, based off of 1 minute and 30 seconds of trailer footage. Then it finally comes out, and they're, and they're disappointed that it isn't as controversial as they were expecting it to be. Brilliant. Fucking brilliant. And for some sort of reason, all these fucking morons were ignoring what the developers were actually saying. In an interview with Vice, one of the devs said that the game isn't as violent as you think. There are mainstream games that are far more violent than Hatred. And this is true. Grand Theft Auto is far more violent than this game. Yet Hatred is the one that receives an adults-only rating for no fucking reason. In an interview with none other than Polygon, one of the devs was asked who the target audience for the game is. His reply was, and I quote, Our target is basically a gamer that is coming home after a long, tiring, and overall, a shitty working day. So, we give him the opportunity to just sit by his computer and let some of the steam go by, shooting NPCs, destroying the level. It is as simple as that. What is so hard to understand? And that's exactly how I felt when I was playing this game. I was having a shitty fucking week. I felt depressed, then I, I installed Hatred, started shooting the shit out of people, started blowing shit up, and I was having a fucking blast. Hatred is a dumb fucking action game. It's as simple as that. It's cheesy as hell with hilariously bad one-liners and awful dialogue in general. It doesn't take itself seriously. How many violent action movies are out there that have countless people getting killed? What about that movie Death Proof that has Kurt Russell playing a crazy stuntman, stalking and killing women? What about that movie Maniac from 1980? You ever see this French movie called Martyrs? It's pretty much an hour and a half sequence of a woman being tortured, including being skinned alive. But that movie won 7 awards, and had nominations for 8 more. Currently, it has a 7.1 out of 10 rating on IMDb. So, all these films are good and acceptable, but a stupid little action game where you just shoot shit is taboo? That makes a whole lot of fucking sense. A game called Party Hard was recently released. In that game, you play as a mass murderer. Your next door neighbors are making too much fucking noise. So you go on over, and you kill everybody. There's another game currently in development called Yandere, or Yandere, I don't know how to say it, but Yandere Simulator where you play as a crazy Japanese schoolgirl that goes around murdering other female students because she thinks they may have a crush on the boy she likes. Where's, where's the outrage? Where's the censorship? Where's the, let's get this shit off the fucking internet? Where's the adults only ratings here? It'd be amazing if people would stop going to these websites. Stop giving them ad revenue. So that these so-called quote-unquote journalists who have no journalistic integrity, they only exist to inject their distorted politics into video games. And it'd be nice if they were gone for good. These people probably have picked the wrong profession to be in. There's nothing wrong with being progressive, but ranting against a video game isn't doing anything towards real issues, such as wage inequality between genders, police brutality towards minorities, and other issues that affect real people on a day-to-day -day basis. So how about those people fuck off and go help people in need, since that is what they are interested in, and leave people like me alone who occasionally want to play a stupid fucking shooter. Thank you.